Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our first Flume Pro webinar for uh, 2018. Uh, today, we're going to be covering uh, the governance and administration suite backup capabilities. Um, this is um, the new solution that was introduced uh, at the end of last year. And what we decided to do is split the coverage um, of the content uh, in order to give everyone uh, the ability to see what's uh, within it. There's there's really there's three major uh, components which um, make up uh, the GA suite, and uh, today we're going to be addressing backup. So for those that were not with us in the prior sessions, you know the GA suite was introduced really with the uh, <clears throat> objectives of providing administrators and uh, PMOs the ability to follow a, a build deploy manage cycle for uh, PWA sites uh, for for the PPM solution uh, of project online the first uh, is PWA build and that uh, is done by starting with build configurations uh, that you can make changes to once that's stable you will use capabilities within the GA suite to uh, do a quick deployment of um, that configuration, and we believe that you know getting feedback loop started quickly uh, allows uh, greater adoption of uh, the PPM solution. And then finally, uh, with the GA suite, you have a number of change management capabilities um, of which backup is included. And what we want to do is enable uh, time savings lowering overhead of administering uh, the PWAs that you might have within your PPM solution. So uh, we're going to be continuing to add capabilities to it uh, uh, over time. Uh, there's been a very heavy roadmap and investment in our part to uh, you know drive these objectives uh, for all organizations that use Project Online. Um, as I said in my introduction, you know right now we have three three major components. One is Solution Builder. The second is the change management features, and the third is backup. And uh, you know, today we're going to be dealing with backup. So we're going to talk about um, backing up and restoring projects, project sites and configuration, and the capabilities that um, are available within the GA suite to address backup. So uh, before I go further, I want to make sure I did put in a couple of polls in here. So wanted to know how many of you have implemented uh, Project Online. It looks like the majority of the folks uh, on the call are either have either implemented or um, are in progress, but I would say, yeah, everybody in this call has, uh, has implemented or is in progress, which is great, because all the content will be will be relevant to you. Um, I'll go ahead and close the polls. So the let's talk a little bit about backup and why we we have done backup. So. Why the Fluent Pro Backup is uh, some of you might uh, know or not know that out of the box capabilities are uh, you know, far between. You really only have to disaster recovery that might sub provide to the site collection level. So, um, and we have a, a experience in, this blo in, in our blog that this actually happened to us uh, by you know some uh, mistake that uh, um, an oversight really. We have many, many tenants, and one of them, uh, uh, you know, was not um, went through a disaster recovery uh, event. So we actually had to make the request to Microsoft support, and then uh, go through the process of recovering the content that was within that site collection. Uh, and there were many projects, many sites there. Um, the first thing is that managing the ticket process. Uh, is not as easy as you would think. You have to go back and forth in terms of really negotiating the content that you're going to bring back. Um, the second is it's not immediate. 
So in our case, it took days to resolve. Um, so not really a good situation if you're in a you know mission critical state with your PPM content. Uh, so um, again, um, it's it's suboptimal uh, from a, a, a life scenario for a for a, um, a PMO. Uh, the second would be to manage uh, the content offline by saving projects offline, and um, it's really not feasible. I mean, the overhead involved in that, uh, even for an organization that has 25 projects, um, you know, can be excessive. So we don't recommend it. That's why this product exists, the service exists. And um, again, if you if you want a, a real life scenario, go to the blog. You can take that to your leadership team and say, no, this is what happens, and this is why we need uh, the backup product because it, 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 you know you don't you overlook it until the day that it actually happens to you, and at that point, unfortunately, it's too late. There will be data loss. There will be um, consequences. Uh, So the, the typical scenarios that we see, and you know, we talked about this back in October when we when we did our backup uh, webinar. You know, this has to be part of uh, the overall IT backup and archive policy. I'm sure all the organizations have this in place for all their other applications and content. So uh, the PPM solution needs to have this. Uh, it's a must-have, um, especially if you're if you're driving um, transformational projects of the organization. From a compliance regulatory contractual requirement, it might be the case. You might not be aware of it, but your customers, your own customers, might actually uh, force you to have this. So make sure you have that checked off. Uh, just the normal operations of uh, managing schedules and publishing schedules. Um, there might be a situation where you just have a core project. Uh, so that's one example of you know having um, an ad hoc request. Um, or the need to have backups for a specific set of projects, and I'll show the ad hoc capability because you know that's something that um, you might be in a, a reporting cycle or an update cycle with a, a project or a set of artifacts, and you might want to do uh, an immediate ad hoc um, backup uh, in order to ensure that that's maintained. Uh, the other one is versioning, so you will see that. We have now the capability of taking production content, for instance, and scheduling it to be backed up to a separate PWA. And we actually have customers that um, are, you know, using uh, the backup and restore. They're essentially restoring to a second PWA and then doing changes on those projects just to see uh, outcomes, uh, uh, different outcomes than uh, what is in the production instance. Uh, so a bit of a scenario management, scenario planning uh, capability. Uh, that the backup actually would allow you to to have, and that again is because we we do allow in this new version of backup to restore to a separate PWA. So we'll, we're going to show um, in the demonstration in a second that you know we're going to you can create a backup schedule or perform an on-demand schedule. You're restoring uh, PWA data from that backup to multiple PWAs. It doesn't necessarily need to be. Uh, the source PWA could be another target, and um, as we had before, uh, the backup allows you to uh, manage the configuration of a PWA site, uh, projects within the PWA site, and also SharePoint content. So, um, you know, the sites and the content within uh, those project sites. Uh, so, in terms of what's new. Uh, from the old uh, backup service, uh, so you know we have the same capabilities. Um, as I as I've kind of alluded, we have more flexibility to manage content and configuration ac across PWAs because again we can restore to different PWAs um, and um, in, in different manners really, and that leads into you know the backup case use case overlaps into change management use case. So you'll see that um, when you when we get into the the, the application on servers, you can see that you know there with the other capabilities that uh, the G Suite has. Um, you know, one important use case that I want to talk about because um, it it comes up a lot. Uh, organizations are taking all, especially when they first migrate, they might be taking all of their content uh, that was in Project Server 
and for multiple reasons might want to uh, include um, closed uh, or canceled projects as part of that. So you, know, you can do your standard backup, which would be um, scheduling projects uh, over an interval um, and doing you know do the standard uh, backup procedure. Uh, and but what we can do now is also focus on archiving. So uh, get those canceled and closed projects and put them in a different PWA. I mean, Microsoft uh, provides per tenant uh, a large set of PWAs that can be created. And um, that archiving can be accomplished uh, with uh, the GA suite uh, backup capabilities. Uh, so this is one way of um, keeping the PWA, the production PWA, lean and mean, and um, taking all those closed uh, and uh, canceled projects and putting them in, in another archive PWA. So before I move forward, I'm just interested. I'm just one more poll just to see how. So do you currently have a backup strategy with everything I've I've just uh told you what I we can see that a, a large number of folks are the uh, numbers are moving around, but uh it you, you might have a backup strategy for Office three sixty five. Uh Office sixty five has um other uh backup capabilities. Uh, but um as the Paul, Paul confirms uh, you know, the majority of folks do not have a backup strategy for for content. So uh, allow me one second, and I'm going to change uh, screens here so that we can go to the demonstration. So when you first land on the G Suite, this is kind of a home page um, that uh, the first thing you will see are the PWAs that are registered uh, to the subscription. Uh, it's really unlimited. Uh, the base subscription comes with two, and that's what you see here. I have something called PPM Express Main as a PWA, and I have a, a PMO Pro Main. In terms of the the rest of the user interface when I come in, I can see that I'm in the home page, uh, the J Suite, all other solutions that uh, are available to you from uh, Fluent Park in the show here. So I have my Pulse reporting, my integration hub, and also Fluent Books because I, I, you can have also the client, which is separate from the solution. Uh, if I go to my gear over here, I can manage my environments. Um, if I have another account, I have storage settings and for the time being, we are allowing the old UI, but this will be phased out, so it's really not even worthwhile to go there. Um, the GA Suite is the primary uh, interface for, for backup, and um, that's what uh, everyone uh, is having access to. I do have alerts, and you can see here that you know an hour ago, I backed up. Uh, I completed a backup, so we're, we're going to go look at that in a second. Uh, these arrows determine, you know, the, the flow of data, how you've defined it. Uh, so within settings, you will, you can actually define that, and we'll, we'll see that in a second. You have here um, the ellipsis, and in order to get it to backup, because that's what we're going to talk about for the next few minutes, uh, you can go directly to the backup um, menu item here. The backup menu item uh, in this uh, menu is really for uh, doing an ad hoc backup. So I'm just going to go to it just to see what happens. Here I can start a new backup ad hoc. So in that, that PM that requested that backup uh, because they wanted to, you know, make sure that they maintain that content, you could go in here and say, okay, let's go and select that one project that um, I need and that I was requested to backup, and I can um, come in and uh, select the project that I that was requested 
uh, by, by that PM. And I think I've done everything right here and just waiting for my project list to come up. And what happens is I'll go through select the project and um, after selecting the project, um, I can go basically initiate the backup. So I can initiate the backup directly from here. So I can go here, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and do line six, six, seven, and I don't need anything else. And I'm gonna get a, an email on completion and I can just say this was PM request. Uh, whatever it, you, you can, you're you're free to use um, what you want, and then you will start the backup. So, uh, if you do it in that fashion, when the backup is completed, uh, and in fact, when any backup is completed, you're going to get a notification, and um, um, just like uh, I did complete one uh, recently. So this is the second way of actually accessing backup. If you note it, I'll go back so you can see it. I went directly and clicked into the PWA that I was managing. So in this case, it's PPM Express Main. And I see that all my environments are listed on the left. The rest of the capabilities of GA Suite are listed. And there's one, uh, the ones that are relevant for backup are backup and schedules. Uh, so following that action of doing an ad hoc backup, I can go in here and I can see that there was a backup that was completed. And if I click on it, this happened, um, you know, just recently. Um, you can see that you get uh, summary information on what occurred, what happened. Well, I backed up my plan 6767. And if I wanted to restore, I could go into restore, uh, select the project. In this case, the only project that I did. You can select back to the um, the source, or you can use a target environment. And this is where moving projects to uh, an alternate environment to a, a different a target uh, from the source could, could occur. And, um, you know, you would just have, I don't have any here defined, but it could have a, another, um, an archive or uh, a versioning um, PWA, and I would just take that, that, that backup and uh, make sure that it was restoring to that alternate PWA. Uh, what happens uh, along the way, by the way, is that if you, once you complete your uh, your backups, you're going to get a message so here. Um, you know, my, the backup that I did on PBM Express for that 667 earlier uh, went through, and you can see that I get a message saying that, you know, uh, we're all good. Uh, likewise, if it was unsuccessful, you would also get a notification saying, hey, we had some problems with the, with the data, with the content. Um, and there you can interact with our um, our help desk, our support team, support at fluentpro.com to um, find out what the issue is. It could be a project issue or it could be a processing issue. So, But notifications are available. And so um, this is the uh, restore screen and then you would uh, go through and um, see the restore as it's taking place. I actually didn't go through and do a restore so that's why there's none showing here. So again, going back to uh, how you can do a backup, the first one is the ad hoc and I went through by clicking into the uh, the immediate backup or the, or the ad hoc backup now, if you will, uh, capability. For scheduled backups, I'm again gonna go back to my environment. So here um, I'm taught we're addressing PPM Express main. And you can see that there's a schedule tab and this is where we would go and then define um, uh, a scheduling profile of what we wanted to back up. And again, we're still within PPM Express Main. So I have two here, one that I created for a major program and uh, one that I created for that PM request. So here's a, a PM that requested uh, a specific backup. So instead of doing the ad hoc, I just went ahead and created a schedule and I'm just gonna do it on a weekly basis. So let's go ahead and look at uh, how I did on, on this requested one. So on the scheduling profile, the first thing you're gonna have a title, uh, PM for major project requested uh, a backup. Um, you can decide whether to act, have the backup active or not. And then comes defining the schedule. So when am I going to do it? Or, or how frequently am I going to do it? And when am I going to do it? Am I going to do it daily? I'm going to do it weekly or monthly. I've selected it. it's going to be you know Thursday at 3 UTC. 
in this case, it's a backup operation because you can have a, a and this is change management really, we'll address that uh, next week. But since we're talking only about backup, I'm gonna go ahead and do a backup. I'm gonna do uh, PWA configuration and project plans and your point content. So I went through and did, you know, several actions here. Uh, again, I modified uh, what I wanted. It's really the audit tracking solution project, but you could have multiple projects here. Um, and that basically defines um, the profile for this specific backup. Uh, when I'm done, I basically save and I'm ready to roll. Uh, similarly, you can um, define you know multiple uh, scheduling profiles, and you can see that I have one for a major program, um, which I'm taking weekly, and I'm doing for uh, a select number of projects, like which is in target and parallel ERP. Uh, I'll note that if you wanted to do it by view, for instance, and wanted to have it by EPT, for instance, so if you wanted to have uh, um, uh, views by enterprise project type and then take a certain type of project uh, because you're managing that, um, you know, separately, you can do that or create, you know, any type of view within PWA Project Web App. We'll, uh, we'll grab it and basically those are the projects that will be uh, selected and if they have content, they'll also be um, uh, backed up. So you have options in terms of you know selecting all, selecting um, uh, you know a certain set, uh, selecting uh, modified as you know what has been modified in the last two days, in the last three days. So this is really what has changed uh, by view, as I said, or selected, which is the one that I have been you know working with. So that addresses our our profile. Uh, backup profiles, and you can see here that you know I have um, a couple of profiles done. Uh, if we go go back to backups, this shows the ones that uh, I already completed, and I walked you through the one that had been done immediately. But you can see here that I have a very dated one from some time ago, and um, you know it shows that our capability to maintain as many backups as you need uh, for um, a specific PWA, and um, you know this can also be driven by the subscription that you have. Now, um, why is this here and why hasn't it been deleted? Well, we do have the ability, and by the way, you can see in the, my main screen when I come in that I can see the backups that have been done and that I can restore. Um, and I could go into you know uh, any one of these, which is um, you know the same ones that we saw previously. These are completed backups now. Uh, but in the bottom of the screen, and again, we'll talk through these mid sections in our in our um, in our webinar next week. You have retention policy, so I could have decided that um, you know I want to retain uh, daily, weekly, monthly, or manual uh, backups uh, older than a certain date. So you can, you know, there are document retention policies that we've uh, included in here uh, for backups within that PWA. So um, you can uh, define how you want to manage these in order to also control the sizing because the subscription does have uh, a data volume uh, ceiling threshold. And you know we work with you to make sure that nothing gets lost. But um, you should be also thinking about um, you know what you need to retain. Um, uh, it can be you know a uh, monthly or bi-monthly uh, um, retention. Um, with four weekly backups, for instance, that's the most common one we see. So um, there's a couple of questions, and I'll I'll get a few minutes. Thank you for um, for posting them. Um, let me go back and um, just close by you know again once you have uh, your your backups completed, um, just like I showed here, um, you see them. Um, and this is one that's going to happen in the future, but these are the two that we also saw in the in the backups that have been completed. The, um, so from here, I can also go and you know view and restore accordingly um, for the content that is there. So you know here again, we're back back to our plan six seven six seven, which I completed uh, earlier. Um, that's essentially uh, backup. You know backup schedules, and then 
uh, being able to go directly from your um, uh, from your PWA uh, screen through the ellipsis on the right. And um, with that, I'll go back and uh, close with our slides. Let me go here. So the va uh, va value of the phone for backup in the J Suite, well, yeah, as I showed you, it's automated and scheduled. Nothing has changed um, in terms of the high security and data encryption that we had previously in the solution. Um, it's scalable to customer requirements. Um, we do have the ability to have it uh, on premise for government customers or you know high secure customers. Uh, all that really means is we you know hand over the solution. Uh, there are additional costs for maintenance, but um, uh, if it's an absolute necessity. Uh, to have it within a custom, customer infrastructure, uh, it is available. Um, the SaaS service is very cost effective. It's really based on usage. And again, for small organizations, uh, the base description for 25 projects um, is really the starting level. I showed how we have monitoring notifications and also our support uh, help desk uh, is included to make sure that uh, those backups uh, take place and you're able to uh, restore them uh, accordingly. Just a quick summary in terms of uh, the GA suite in general. And again, we'll deal with all the other components that you saw on the screen that we didn't cover next week. Um, what we want to do is automate that PWA build, deploy, manage experience for the administrators. It's a cloud-based service uh, for managing your project online PWA sites. Uh, we are fulfilling the requirement for disaster recovery for project online data that uh, at an item line level with uh, a uh, full set of control features for you to decide how and when you do those backups. Uh, it's the same proven core platform that uh, Flume Pro has had uh, for a number of years. Um, you know, we've been in, in business since 2009 developing solutions and we believe it's value based because it's really based on usage. You only, um, we're really cost based on the workloads uh, that are driven by the number of projects you require to back up. If you want to go online, I uh, list some resources that are available. Um, if you've seen our help guides uh, previously, you know they're uh, very in-depth and step-by-step. Um, I just highlight here the J Suite uh, help guide, and you know, prominently in the beginning is backup, create a backup schedule, perform it on that backup, restore data from a backup copy, which is essentially what I just showed. Um, if you are a customer, have a customer, a partner that has a customer, um, you know, please uh, feel free to give us a, uh, an email for um, a trial. We do issue quotes as part of trials, which are non-committal, but uh, you know at least you have an idea what it's going to cost you. Uh, and throughout the trial process, if you uh, need help, you can always write to support at fluentpro.com. So in terms of uh, pricing and availability, um, because it's part of the GA suite, you know, backup begins with the, the what we call the base description, which is uh, 25 projects to be backed up, two PWAs within a tenant, and you also get the solution builder capability, which you haven't really talked about, but we will um, uh, next week. Uh, the subscription is registered to the organization that owns a tenant, and that's just a, a legal caveat. So um, whoever owns a tenant basically is going to get an email saying, hey, you have uh, the GA suite that you can um, now use with your Office 365 tenant and PWA sites. Uh, but uh, in terms of the volume build, you can see that you know basically is incremental. So we we're trying we're trying to make it as uh, um, atomic as possible, basically in chunks of 50 projects. You do get two PWAs. If you're interested in more PWAs, you can upgrade uh, to uh, more PWAs. Um, the GA suite starts priced based on this backup volume, but you know even if you receive uh, the lowest um, subscription, the base subscription level, you would get the, all three solutions in one. So you're going to get Solution Builder, you're going to get the backup that we just addressed, and then the change management capabilities that um, we'll discuss in next week's webinar. 
And one big question we'll ask, because it really defines uh, workload, is how many active project project types require backup, and on what frequency are you going to be backing up? So is it daily? Um, is it weekly? Is it monthly? Uh, and uh, we really uh, ask an additional question: is you know how many require changes? Because we do um, you know focus on um, projects and content that has received changes. It lessens the, the overall workload uh, and the cost for for you as a customer. So with that, I will open it up to uh, questions. And um, we have a question. Uh, we will be sharing the presentation with everyone, so absolutely. Uh, you'll get uh, a copy of the presentation and the, um, the webinar when it's completed. So there's a question uh, regarding the where the backup is stored. So uh, the backup is stored uh, directly in Azure. Um, it is the Fluent Pro Azure account. Uh, if you have your own Azure account, you have the ability within that gear. Uh, there's a setting where you can actually um, process the backup to your Azure storage, uh, and there's um, admin uh, uh, settings uh, that are uh, listed there uh, is there a size limit or how much uh, it can it, how much you can back up well the volume uh, for your subscription will determine that uh, there is a sizing threshold um, we can manage it in other words if you need more storage we just add it and you upgrade to it it's not significantly uh, and a significant incremental cost uh, but you know there is a threshold uh, in terms of uh, what you have as storage. Uh, and then do you have tenant admin rights to manage the backup settings? Uh, we don't have tenant admin rights. The uh, permissions that are required or the credentials that are required are PWA and SCA admin permissions uh, for the target uh, PWA that you're going to, or the source that you're taking the backup from and the target where you're going to restore. So um, basically a PWA admin uh, will be able to manage this and they're stored within your um, um, they're stored within your account. Uh, additional question: Is there a way to make to make a backup by selecting projects on custom fields? What are the prices on uh, on custom fields? So you can within the backup settings, um, there is uh, you have the ability to create a view which is based on custom fields and only select those projects. So that would be uh, the way of um, you know, filtering projects for just a subset of all of the projects in your PWA. So uh, you, you could create a, a PWA view with certain custom fields, and then that view would be the one that would be, uh, you know, have the, the the set of projects that would be backed up. So the answer is yes. You could you can do that within the the capabilities. Um, I'll just give it one more minute. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to type type it into the the question uh, panel. Uh, we have a white paper comparing the default restore services we get with PWA versus GA backup suite. Uh, there. Uh, we can send some links of what Microsoft provides. Uh, again, back on, on that uh, slide that I had, really what Microsoft provides is site collection disaster recovery. So they don't really provide anything specific to uh, a PWA, um, you know, where you can select a project, so you can select a frequency. You have to uh, register a ticket within Microsoft and then have the entire site collection restored nothing in reference to PWA uh, to Project Online. So that's kind of the, the sad um, part of it. In terms of white papers, there aren't any, but you know, it's a 
good for good to do for us. Uh, the blog post that we showed actually um, um, has the exact experience that you go through in uh, using the default capability. So I suggest that's probably the best right now that we can provide uh, because it, it's an actual uh, event that occurred to us um, and uh, you know describes in detail uh, the steps that we had to go through to recover uh, a PWA site uh, and um, you know it's related content. Uh, yes, uh, another question on sharing the presentation and the webinar. Yeah, we absolutely will uh, make it available to everyone so that uh, you can uh, you can listen to it again and share it with your colleagues. Okay, if there's no other um, questions, I'm going to go ahead and uh, complete uh, the uh, webinar. I want to thank everyone for joining. And uh, if you are in a position to, you know, develop your backup strategy for Project Online, feel free to drop us a line and we can uh, assist uh, in terms of, you know, uh, if, if you are a customer and are interested in, in giving, it, giving it also uh, a trial, feel free to also uh, send us an email, um, and we can definitely facilitate that. I'll put our information here uh, in a second. But oh, just before I forget, we do have our upcoming webinar on change management. So the other part of uh, the the GA suite is uh, you know the copy, uh, compare, document, edit capabilities between PWAs that we we uh we include in the J Suite. So we're gonna be talking about that next week. So uh look for the uh, invitation for that. That's an interesting uh set of capabilities. Again, if you have a a dynamic uh, uh environment where you're trying to uh you're experiencing a lot of change within uh your project online PWA, this is a um an or expanding number of PWAs this is another interesting uh set of capabilities for, for your organization. So Please join us. And um, I list our contact information. So again, if you're interested in uh, trying the capabilities, give us a like to info at Flume Pro or sales at Flume Pro, and we will uh, address uh, your requirement. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we Hope to hear from you soon, and uh, thanks for joining the webinar.